Alright, adventures! Welcome back for another episode of Class Trip. Our students are rounding up their adventure. Just a few episodes left. But, uh... Somebody might die? I don't know. They're getting into very dangerous situations. Possibly uh, beyond that of mere students. Before we get to all that action, let's see if our Dungeon Master has any announcements for us this week. Out a little gnome who never used an evil... Hello. The announcements for today, beginning with attendance. David Mason, Skyler, Wanderer Jiren, Credus, James Marte, Ryle Grimrick, Larissa Quill, Grilka, Axel, and Alexis Fernan. Regularly scheduled programming for us this week. We had our Mercenaries of Mischief show on Sunday, and then uh, we did a trash bin stream where we played some board games. It's a lot of fun. We played a new game called King's Guild, uh, which turned out to be a lot longer than we anticipated, but we had a good time with it. Uh, of course, we've got class trip today with our lovely students who are all going to definitely survive and not take any poison damage today. And... We'll have a uh, ladies' night Fire Emblem Three Houses continue on our Trash Bin YouTube channel on Friday night. Uh, we're we're almost to the twist. It's probably going to happen. If not that episode, the one after. As you can tune in for all of that on this channel and our lovely sister channels. And before we get to the opener, I'd like to take a moment to thank our good friends, Hero Forge, sponsors of this episode and uh, the next one in the series. Uh, so <laughs> thank you so much to Hero Forge. Please go out, get some custom minis from Hero Forge. Uh, they're an incredible company. You can get all kinds of cool miniatures. You can get them in full color now. Uh, thousands of options, anything you want, you can create on there. They're really great for us because they've been helping us out and helping us grow the channel. Uh, good friends of ours, please check them out if you can. Uh, and without further ado, uh, if you please. <laughs> a fun house but now it's full of evil clowns and by that i mean welcome to class trip i of course am your benevolent dungeon master puck and i am joined today by the students of class alpha <laughs> which i will now introduce in no particular order starting with uh class class representative and rogue mastermind uh our good friend sakura hanamura is here today that's me <laughs> and also joining us today, you can strike her down, but she'll just become more powerful and possibly a bear. Lyra is here today. <laughs> Hopefully not dying, or getting close to dying this time. <laughs> and you may call him the Night Wolf, or maybe just Kyrus for today. Kyrus is also here. <laughs> I bring justice. All of the justice is here. Best served gold. Justice does not like to wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> and also joining us, uh, you know, he he forgot to pick up the skull, but we're not worried about it. Uh, Angelo is here. <laughs> I didn't forget to pick up nothing. Uh, uh, Sakura got it, right? Right, Sakura? <laughs> and of course, no class would be complete without its instructor. We have Lilith Singer here today as well. <laughs> here to make sure all of our students survive. Now then, when last we left our students, 
It was time to investigate Splice Labs, but before we could get directly to it, the mission that had been handed down to them after they discovered an unusual troll with petrifying abilities, they were asked to investigate some former members of Splice Labs, a Miss Cassandra Weiss, a woman that may or may not have been a lich. Uh, lich possibly confirmed. Uh, so... They went to go meet with Cassandra under the guise of being some mercenaries that were looking to, uh, you know, perhaps take advantage of her knowledge of Splice Labs, uh, only to find that Cassandra Weiss had a target on her back when a group of assassins arrived attempting to kill her. Luckily, our party was prepared and engaged in mortal combat with these assassins and defeated all of them. Cassandra Weiss, thankful for the assistance, provided them with an amulet that she said would allow them access to certain levels of Splice Labs that they wouldn't be able to get into otherwise. And then they departed, heading for Splice Labs. It was a long crawl through the forest and up the sides of the edges of the Star Mountains, but eventually they reached the plateau uh, where the ruins of this Splice Labs sit. And that is where we join our party today. Get rid of this fun music. Can go with this now. <laughs> Actually, now let's go with this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, as you arrive to the plateau, as you move past, uh, you had discovered the first kind of petrified remains of an individual that had the same symbol on him that you noticed on the assassins that attacked Cassandra. Uh, and as you move up to the plateau, you can see the destroyed remains. There are ruins and battle scars all over this land. And in fact, you can see even a few more statues uh, that bear a resemblance to the broken ones you saw along the road. Some of the blood here is old, some of it is fresh but you can see kind of the wrecked foundation of where this building used to be. And uh, I'm free to move about and explore. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a look, closer look at these. You said they're people petrified, obviously. Yeah. Could I take a closer look at one of them? Absolutely, you could. Uh, yeah. In investigating them and looking them over, uh, they they seem to be dressed in leather armor. Uh, they have a rather disturbed look on their faces. And uh, their armor is adorned with that symbol of a serpent with one head of a snake and the other appearing to have the head of a dragon meeting in the middle. Mm. Does it look like the same situation that happened with the troll? It seems so. These are mm. either test subjects or employees where something went horribly wrong. I... What? Where did that come from? We heard that in game, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, oh. I'm not having a tick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, can we perception check? Uh, Where's that coming from? Uh, Where did that come from? Uh, I'll, Do we have a... I'm a... Can, can we just look around? Yeah, yeah, do we have a direction we can hear that from? It's coming from this direction. Okay. Nope, I got nothing. So uh, I, I go brandish. the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I brandish my weapons. Hmm. Can someone identify that sound? Like, it does it... Does anyone... Yeah, does like anyone recognize nature? it? Is it in some type mm -hmm. of animal? Would Larry no. be able to recognize it? Arcana check, please. Meanwhile, I'm going to stealth ahead and kind of peek down. Well, I rolled a six on Arcana, so. Okay. Yeah, I got a nat 20 stealth. E nice. I don't exist anymore. <laughs> Where's Sakura? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lyra, I got an it's 11. behind you. Oh, but what is that? 
<laughs> Slinking out from the rubble, a mass of uh, glistening flesh covered in eyes and teeth lurches forward, making its way towards you. And I'm going to need some initiatives, folks. <laughs> That's Ooh. some forbidden chicken shit. I <laughs> forbidden chicken. I don't know how how uh, against how much are you against talking about plans beforehand, Puck? Uh, look, you can plan up all you want. I'm not against it. I endorse it. Okay, so uh, Kyrus is very cautious about this possibly being an innocent person that has been transformed into a monstrosity, and would like to try to appeal to their better nature before we start chopping it to bits. If that's all right with everybody else. Too bad my instinct was to swing at it, but good thing my initiative is really low. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. <laughs> Kyra just prepped. Kyra, you're what the first to go. She doesn't throw it yet, so. Kyra, you have the highest initiative, so. I do, I mean, lucky. You're the quickest to act. Very, very <laughs> lucky. Yeah. It's at the okay. top of the round. Yes. All right, make sure I've got everybody in here. I got Angelo at eight. I got Sakura at eight. I've very, got, very lucky. Uh, roll. Lilith at 17. Wait, do you have animal, animal homies. Oh, yeah. Our, uh, our giant oh, yes. badgers. <laughs> Your animals. Let me load them back onto here for you while I line up everybody's initiative. Yeah. The Army. Bag of Tricks doesn't have a time limit on it, does it? The babies. It does not. Okay, um, so this means this is not a time But are we on a new day? I mean, we yes. just travel. I can take yeah, it, more it help. is a new day. Oh goodness! Yeah. <laughs> is the plan to take out additional animals? Have a small uh, army. Let's have no. I, I won't do that to you. Yeah. Well, it all let's... depends how much you're gonna throw at us, Puck. Don't make me pick my bag of treats. <laughs> well, we'll see. I'm I'm probably gonna throw it a bit. Oh. Uh, well. All right, so uh, you know what? I'll put these guys in short order, but Kairos, go ahead and tell me how you want to approach this with you at the top. Okay, I'm just going to lower my weapons, uh, sheath my sword, but still have my shield out, and I'm just going to hold a hand up. There. Hold okay. hold on, hold on. We're not here to <laughs> hurt you. I understand that and I'm gonna step a little bit closer, just holding my hand my free hand out first. We understand that there have been some horrible experiments that have gone on here. I don't know who you are, but I know that you must have been a subject of one of these. Just if you give us a chance. And that will be my turn, just slowly approaching to try and appear non threatening. Okay. Uh, the creature does not move aggressively. And I just look over to my party members and nod. There we go. That will be my turn. All right. Lilith? Seems you have subdued this monster calmly. Um, does anyone have an inkling idea of what it is? We look at it. <laughs> now that we see the creature. Well, um, well, if you've seen one of these before. I have? Ooh, you okay. have. It was on an island that was uh, made of people kind of cemented into a tower. And these bizarre flesh beasts covered in teeth and eyes had attacked you and your party. Oh, no. Is it that but time where we caught these... by the mist? Yeah, it was. And where you were like at that tower? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but these only, things are only frozen. Well, they attacked you, us, the pirates. You know these as gibbering mouthers, aberrant creatures created by magic. Oh, 
Oh my... Okay, Lilith is also kind of, like, trying to function. <laughs> Hold on. How... Why are these things here when they were... on an island? It doesn't make any sense. Um... Did someone bring them here? What island? I'm not sure we ended up on some island that was covered in bloody mist and then all hell break loose. I don't... Is it related to the stones? Is this... Did someone put them there? Did they, did they come from here? And like, well, just kind of like trying to puzzle things together. Um, Lilith is gone bye-bye now. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I guess my turn's on hold. In case I see any danger coming in, I'll, I'll hold my action. Well, this okay. is processing right now. <laughs> there is a grinding of stone, Kyrus, as the statue that you're standing next to turns to you. And as it does, this black kind of jam-like substance starts to leak out of all of its cracking joints. And it claws at you. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit. <laughs> that's a 22, sir. <laughs> Pretty sure that could tear down a wall. <laughs> that is 11 slashing damage. And I'm going to need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, boy. I think I'm good at those. I'm all right at those. Uh, let's see. First, the uh, uh. 11. And... Oof. All right. You're okay. You are not affected by its uh, bizarre ability. <laughs> uh, the gibbering mouther starts to freak out. <laughs> Moves this way. Um, oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> Next um, up, Lyra. This statue just attacked your friend. <laughs> um... I just want to like quickly communicate and be like, so I'm playing from the statues um, and I'm gonna do something important with this. <laughs> and cast Primal Savagery and attempt to slash at it. Okie dokie. Uh, primal Savagery with a 10. 10. Not quite for these stone statues. You you rake your claws against it, but it's just not happening. If, yeah, um, just I'm not gonna take it. By. I'm gonna have um, sh shillelagh to prepare for the next turn as a bonus action. Very well, shillelagh is prepared. Uh, the statue in front of Lilith moves and goes to strike her. Ah. Uh, the same jam like substance coming did, out of its joints. Were you holding? I did say, yeah, I was holding an action. Okay, what do uh, you got? So I guess it depends like who who attacks first is the question. <laughs> well, let's let's get you against it first before it rolls its eleven. What do you got? Um, doesn't hit me. Okay. So it misses. All right. And um, it says it's right. It's it's a uh, it's right next to me. You said it's, it's not it's attacking right me from a distance. Front of you. It's right in front of me. Oh whoa! Oh, I see it now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I use my sword and uh, slashy slash. Okie dokie. Give him the slashy slash. Slashy slash. Did it hit? Your sword no. sparks against its stone form, and it kind of. <laughs> but. Can't find you can't seem to crack it. Sakura? Um hold on, oh. one second. Uh oh, you got another thing? I guess with uh yeah, bonus action. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> um mm -hmm. in case anyone needs to rearrange themselves like right now to plan what they want to do, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just be like Arm yourselves, get ready <laughs> for this shenanigan. And uh, I will cast um, a mantle inspiration, so we can all have temporary 
8 HP. And right now, move wherever you need to. It is not going to cause a reaction from the enemy to attack you. So if you need to get away from this creature for whatever reasons uh, without getting attacked, now's the time. I'm simply going to move over here, I guess. Just making sure that I'm right in the middle between it and the gibbering mouth. Or... All right. Um, that's it. That's my turn. Uh, so yeah, at right. HP, please, <laughs> you guys. Very well. Cushion, get that cushion. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets their eight temp, Sakura. Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't like that, and I don't know what any of this is, but I know that that just hurt Kyra so bad. Um, and bad statue. I... <laughs> a statue. Smack. Um, and I'll use uh, my rapier to hack it. Uh, is statue two, two... Wait, never mind. Oh, he was flanked. Rip. <laughs> is he flanked? Oh, uh, I would say that he is flanked. Yeah. What does flank you, do? You, I don't do. You are surrounding him. Uh, currently, it gives you... I mean, you know, you get your sneak attack damage. <laughs> okay. If you hit him. I don't know if I hit him because I got a... Uh... Yeah, that's a... That's a big old nine. Uh, no, it's not going to do it. <laughs> hmm. Well, All I right. see Angela went over there, so I'm going to use my uh, bonus action to give Lyra um, advantage. So, on the next attack. All right. Uh, a gibbering mouther moves in the background. It's Angela's turn. <laughs> Uh, before I do my move, can I ask if our if we had a rest of any sort since the last battle? Oh yeah, you guys are fully rested. Okay, I press the button. Confirm. Okay, uh, I am going to cast Bane on the both statues and the gibbering mouther, um, because okay. I don't know if it's an ally yet. All right. And they got to make a charisma save? Yes. Okay. So, let's... Oh, did I not put charisma on my list? Alright. Oops. Yeah. Alright. Boop. Is there uh, supposed to be two tracks going? Because we are hearing two tracks of music. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> go straight to combat. All right. Nope, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted charisma. Uh, there we go. Got an 18 on charisma, the one statue. That's a very charismatic statue. <laughs> yeah, uh, that one's... And the other statue okay. is less charismatic. <laughs> And one, one of the gibbering mouthers is Oof. not very charismatic either. Wow. Um, and then I am going to look to Kairos, who just got slashed, and say, buddy, are, are you all right? I, I, I want to just give you all of my heart and soul and, and give you some bardic inspiration on your next attack. Uh, thank you, Angelo. I'll be all right. Right. And they get a reduction on their attack for being baned. Is that correct? Uh, go back into the spell. Mm -mm, new for me. Uh, I believe it's minus a d4. Fails, yes. Uh, must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the attack roll or saving throw. Okay. I'm going to roll a fresh one whenever they do it, because that was really low. Kairos! <laughs> All right, well then, I am simply going to take a slash with my trusty sword. All right. Uh, just as normal. On uh, this closest statue, of course. Hiya! A 16. Hiya! A 16. Wait, before you say, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use my bardic inspiration. What is that, a d6? 
Yes, it is. Wow. Yes. So uh, you got him. Yep. <laughs> Twenty-two. So All right. 22. yeah, and I deal uh, one-handed, so that is ten slashing damage, and I'll go ahead and spite it. Why not? All right. Um, other divine smite. Uh, at first Kyris. level. Kyris. Kyris. Okay. For an additional thirteen radiant damage. So you smite this thing and it crumbles to rubble on the ground. It's like, Pfft. and uh, the black goo that you saw oozing out of its joints kind of like oozes out in a pool around it and uh, kind of evaporates in a mist. Mm. I'll make note of that. And uh, and it's dead. <laughs> step right here just to block the way, and that'll be my turn. Very well, okay. Uh, Lilith? Hi. <laughs> what you got? I stab. <laughs> stab him? <laughs> All right. Give him that stab. No stab. Come on, don't miss Lilith. Stab, girl. That gets him. 22. <laughs> Get a do-over. 14? Uh, no. 14 damage. All right. You stab him for 14, and this one crumbles as well. Sweet. As it crumbles, you see like thing. frost coming off of it. Oh yes. <laughs> the crystallized the crystallized pieces of the goo that was in between the joints kind of scatter on the ground like frozen shards, but eventually melt and turn back into mist. Uh and that creature is dead. Ugh. And this brief little tasty combat is more or less over because you've already made friends of the gibbering robbers. So well, the mouthers yeah, kind of like for sure there's gonna the be rubble. trouble ahead. Blah, 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 I just gesture blah, blah, over. Blah, 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 blah. There's more. Oh Iris. Huh. Yes. How did you know the gibbering mouthers were going to be our friends and the statues were our foes? How do we know that the statues aren't actually supposed to be friends too? Even though it attacked you, maybe they're also experiments. Well, uh, that is entirely possible. But looking at their garb and their uniform, the statues were some folk that were uh, perhaps employed by Splice. Uh, either way, they were immediately hostile, whereas these creatures, they seem more confused than anything. Uh, reading through my books um, that I found in the library on Splice. Uh, who knows what other creatures in here could be just as confused. Mm. Uh, uh, as much as I would like to help as many as we can, uh, some unfortunately we can't, and I just look over to the pile of rubble. I don't I think we would be in the wrong for defending ourselves. No, your lives first. Anyone else is second. So, you all see this stairway, and it's very obvious on the floor around this stairway. There are scratch marks into the stone tiles that lead up to this enormous lion statue that you're standing next to. Uh, it's clear that this has moved out of the way um, rather recently because the wear on the floor does not match the age you know you ever you ever have like a place and you haven't moved the couch in like a year and a half and then you move the couch and it's very <laughs> obvious where the couch was yeah. uh, you see that kind of wear pattern here on the tile floors hmm. someone's here before us that's not good um i and paranoid still so but in a different way um can, i can lyra tell what um type of footprints the are left behind like roughly how many people like what size perhaps mm. do a nature check because this area is it's kind of a mixture of rubble nature and like cobbled together stuff so it's going to be a mixture give me your give me your best tracker <laughs> 11. it was a large group wearing boots you can't get exacts on the numbers 
but at least one person was dragged away bleeding. Uh, I relay that information to the party. Um, okay. Don't like that. So definitely Can we switch direction party. the dragging happened? Uh, away from the stairs. So perhaps someone got injured and they had to evacuate. Or they force someone down there with them. But... Well, we're adventurers. We should go down, right? Yep, yeah, mm. we are going to go down. But um, is this lion statue, was it moved like forcibly or is there like a mechanism that like moved it? Ah, good question. Give me an arcana check. No, I don't see. <laughs> oh, I remember it's Arcana is intelligence. Okay, okay. Uh, 14. Mm. You look the statue over for any kind of magical enchantment, and you can feel the amulet that you have in your pocket resonating with it. Oh. Okay. It feels as though that whoever did this may have had something similar. You feel like if you... You don't know exactly how to control it currently, but you think what it, there's probably something that you can do with this amulet that will move this lion. Okay. Said the like, other, the other members of Slice, former members of Slice, were assassinated, and presumably they have the same amulet. So whoever is down there or was down there, possibly are the people who killed. Yeah. The other Slice well, members. Not too sure. Possibly. They're either still down there or yeah, they were killed. Um well either way, just like Angelo said, we're gonna have to go down there. Um I'm going to go down first to uh, scout out ahead. So we'll are we all ready to go? Yes. I think so. All right. Okay. As you descend the dark stairway, uh, it leads into a lower level of this place. And it's obvious that you are not the first people to come here very quickly. Uh, as the stairway ends and you find yourself in a kind of entrance room that leads into a small office, the place appears to be a bit of a mess. There's a door knocked off its hinges on the floor, and there are more of these statues in the room. At the end of the room, you can see a hunched-over figure laying on the floor in a pool of blood in front of another door. Uh, next to the desk, just behind the chair in front of the, or behind the desk, there is a large brass pipe that opens up uh, and another pipe with a grate on it. Hmm. Check if the person is still alive in the pool of blood. Watch out for the statues. Well, don't we probably just kill them now. <laughs> but, uh, I'll walk along this way. Okay. It would be tactically advantageous in case they do attack us again. Uh, yeah. Please check from the corner. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm checking from over here. <laughs> and I'm going right. to investigate this desk. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a dead body. This person's been dead for days. Oh, yeah, they're dead. He has, he has deep wounds all over him and bite marks. Uh, bite marks. Um, Are there remnants marks? of blood on the statue's mouths? No. Bite marks. Do they animal bite marks? Humanoid bite marks? I'm going to need a nature check for that one because that's going to require a close look. Oh, come on. <laughs> They're not human, but you can't determine what animal. <laughs> Um, or at the very least, you wouldn't want to meet the human that has that kind of bite. 
These bite marks, they're not human, that's for sure. Hey, uh, hello? Hello? Okay. Thought I heard something. A voice mm. is coming out of the brass tube on the wall. Hello? Oh, who goes Guys. there? Oh, oh, thank the gods. Okay, one second. Uh, there's a sound what? of grinding stones what? as the light what? that leads upstairs closes off. I don't like this. Um, this is the same number, right? I have a well. Hi. How's it going? Who, who, to whom am I speaking? Um, it's more polite for you to introduce yourself first, and you just closed off the door to the light, so please introduce yourself, thank you. Yeah, I did. That's a negotiating tactic. Uh, that's a thing that I did. So, all right. Uh, how many people are there? Why does it matter? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really for my own math, but uh, you don't have to necessarily answer. Look, I don't know who you are. I've been surviving down here for a couple weeks. My team left me behind. Kind of a dick move. But now I need out. And the problem is there's a whole whack of monsters between me and out. And I don't know who you are, but you came into this place voluntarily. So that I, I want to believe that you're good at killing monsters. And that you also want out. So here's my deal. Help me escape, and I'll open the door. That's really sketchy, bro. Like, we could have just helped you without you being sketchy. Who are you? I don't know that. Three other people ran off. I'm going to try to open the door with the amulet. Very well. The amulet is not responding. I knew I should have stuck my crowbar under that. I thought that we'd be able to open it. That was the paranoid thing. It's like, I knew I should have stuck my crowbar <laughs> under it. Anyways. Besides, look, um, it's not like I'm not going to help you guys. I want you to live so I can leave. I, I don't like this ultimatum. I'll tell you what. You open the door and we will help you. But we're not going to help you unless you open that door. I don't yeah, like it. Yeah, it was more on a weekend, but it wasn't last weekend. That's not how we're going to do this. Oh, I look to Sakura and I'm shaking my head. Hmm, perhaps we can use this, though. If he knows what monsters are below, and we can know what we're getting into. I'd still like to know who you are. Give me a so, name. Where are you from? All right. Introductions, then. Thank Name's you. Conrad. Uh, Conrad Whitmore. Well, Conrad, what monsters are downstairs? More oh, information. Well, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Could you give us a couple examples? Uh, okay. Some of the bad ones are still locked up. Uh, now... I'm a little bit fuzzy on the layout. It's been a couple weeks and I think I'm starting to lose it. But uh, I believe the doorway to your right leads down a hallway. Now there's one in lockup over there. Really scary looking dude. Uh, I don't think you need to worry about him. But after you go down that hallway, I think behind the next door, if you can get it open, there might be a wounded fire elemental incinerated tom right alive like there was nothing left but ash uh but yeah you could get past him and then after that you guys gotta go past like the dissection labs uh don't go to the back of the room in the dissection labs there's something with tentacles in there and uh it snapped up bill uh and i heard a lot of crunching and uh i think bill's dead i'm pretty sure bill's dead uh, after you get past that, it's just a straight shot, two more doors to open, and another straight shot. The doorways will take you right, the stairs will take you right to me, and we can all get out together. And hey, hey, I don't know who you guys are, but hear me out. Now, I'm not, I'm not above paying for work, all right? 
I, they got a lot of really cool stuff in here. Now, I got a guy in water deep that I can fence this stuff with. I've kept myself a little stash up here in this control room. You guys can get me out. You can sell it. I'll cut you in. Everybody likes gold, right? And who are you? Where did you get all that? Who sent you here? Oh. Well, I like to think of myself as kind of a free agent now. But I was formerly with Draconic Rogues engaging in aggressive destruction. Or Dread. Oh. Um, and you steer water operating out of Waterdeep? Uh, no. Um, there's, uh, we operate out of a lot of places. Well, we did. They did. Not part of them anymore. Uh, I'm a free agent now. Hey, hey. Why don't we just work together? We could start our own team. No, thank you. Um, I whisper over to Lyra. What if we use him as a courier for the fake note? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Spendable. Yeah. And I mean, if Xanathar catches on, then he just kills this guy, and then he's not a problem anymore. Mm -hmm. And, hey, I can... I thought with the money, we might be able to get some more of that really good wine, I guess. Mm -hmm. If we survive. But, you know, if he's a problem, we take him out. Obviously, he's too weak to handle the monsters, so I think that we should be fine. Mm -hmm. okay. And he did give us some good intel as well. Okay. Yeah, so I won't be able to hear you guys after you leave this room. Uh, there's another pipeline in the dissection lab, so... Uh, it's near the entrance. If you just pop in and say hello so I know you're still alive, that's cool. We were deliberating. Okay. And also doing our own attempts at the entrance just to see how truthful your threat was. And we can see that it is thorough. So Yeah, they got like an override in here. It's a emergency lockdown procedure. Well... Then, with this emergency, we will take on this deal, and we will work with you to go and find you and get out together. Oh, thank, thank goodness. Look, I know this isn't, like, this is kind of a rocky start to a new relationship, but, like, I'm really a good guy. I just don't want to die down here. That's I think fair. once we meet in person, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to smooth over this. Yeah, and... You said that you had these contacts in Waterdeep, and actually, I know a guy. this this makes it even better for us because I think the only thing that we would want to ask for you, like from you, besides opening up the door, uh, is to just deliver a note for us. That's all. Hey, look, if you get me out of this place, I'll deliver shit to the mass lords. I don't care. <laughs> just let me out. <laughs> all right. So then, uh. Which door is it that you suggest would be the easiest for us to get to you? Well, you, from the entrance, if I'm remembering it correctly, you're going to want to go to your right. I think they barred the other door. Okay. Uh, yes. They were getting chased by monsters when they were getting out. Uh, a couple people were wounded. I would have barred it. <laughs> would you know, were there statues when he entered this? Uh, no, but there was a troll turning people into stone. That was troll weird. Still alive? Uh, I think it followed them out. I'm just navigating by sound here. I didn't see what happened in the last room. Oh, oh, I don't. I think that I think we already took care of it. I think it escaped before. He's been here for weeks now. Oh, so it traveled that far. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. Mm. Oh, Troll's got that long stride. They got long legs, you know, I don't know. Well, let's just take care of these statues with long-range attacks. People can handle that, so then we're not grabbed by them. I really don't like that liquid that was coming from them. So, we're going to handle some statues, and then we'll be on our way to you. Okay, good Good luck out there. Let me know if you need anything. There's a lot of research notes up in here. Uh, weird stuff. These, were, these guys were real assholes. Yeah, we'll get that when we get there to you. 
Sure. Okay. okay. Good luck. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I just kind of like take out like my daggers to get ready to kind of throw at these statues, but I just look at everyone else. Are you all ready to go or? You sounded like a jackass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharon. He could probably still hear us. Well. well, if you'd like to attack the statues, you guys can get a surprise round and everybody can roll with advantage. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to throw a couple daggers at a statue. Uh, I'm going to cast Frostbite. It's a 14 con DC. Hey, okay. Prof Lola. You think you want to collect any of that black stuff for Whistle Whip? I thought we gave him some of that already. Maybe not. Oh, we got more of it. He does have a sample. Oh, oh okay. not the stuff from the statues. <clears throat> That's different. Oh, it's different. Well, um, I would hope that they didn't have the same strength of like a troll. I mean, I've been told knowledge is power, so. Yeah, let's figure out what's going on. All right. Um, scoop the goop. <laughs> <laughs> scoop and uh, Sakura, was your okay? Twenty-five. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's a hundred percent a hit. Uh, give me max damage on that. These targets are technically helpless. Oh, and well, Lyra also moved up, so I also get to, to get to sneak. So, give me, give me the damage. Beaky beat. Uh, I gotta remind myself we are. So the max damage would be. Would be 23. Alright, this one is destroyed. Blech. Shattered into a bunch of pieces. And actually, as you go to try and recover this goo, uh, it evaporates as you put it into a container. So, or it is <laughs> one. Well, you have advantage, Angelo. You can you can do two swings. Yeah. <laughs> hey, twenty-two That's that better. time. All right. Uh, is anyone else going to make an attack against these? Um, Tyrus is going full stealth mode. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just, uh, I don't have any ranged attacks. Oh, that's okay. If you like, you can, I mean, you know, Lyra got close and she was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm relying on my allies for for this. I trust them. Um, right. I'm gonna just bonk it. <laughs> it's chilly, okay. Like, yeah. Well, they bonk it. I'm gonna check this body for anything I can loot from it. Um, All right. So that's a 24 to hit, and then that is a hit. Give me damage. And a 10. 10. It is destroyed. One down. All right. That's actually both of them. Nice. They shatter to pieces, and again, the black goo eases out, oozes out and evaporates on the floor. Uh, does the goop evaporate in the bottle if it's been scooped? Yes, it does. <laughs> well, the vapors are trapped inside, at least. <laughs> uh, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Sakura, this person has some damaged leather armor, some acid burned, uh, an acid burned longsword and dagger. And also has about three gold pieces on him. Well, I got some gold, so that's nice. <laughs> may I retrieve my dagger? You may certainly do so from the, the rubble of the statues. Okay. Um, kind of like just point down the hallway and just be like, once we're out here, we'll talk. So, I'm gonna sneak on forward. 
Kinda. There's a creak of wood. Mm -hmm. I hold up my hand. Mm -hmm. stop, Under our Scooby feet? Scooby-Doo style. Stuff. No. In the, in the darkness ahead of you. I no. will stealth scout ahead. Possibly near dark vision. Corner. Well, I've I've given you your full dark vision radius on there. Okay. So everything uh, that you're seeing as you explore buddy. should be your but uh, let's see here. Doesn't so... appear to have made itself clear yet. Before <laughs> I didn't know it was muted. <laughs> Before she goes <laughs> off, can I put a hand on her shoulder and be like, All right, you've you've trained for this, you got this, uh, and plant bardic inspiration on her. E. Oh. All right. Yeah. Inspired. Inspired. <laughs> so for stealth, I got a twenty-four. All right. Thank you, sneaky. You are stealthily moving ahead. Okay. I'm go. As oh. you start to come into this room. You see this bizarre tendril covered creature behind a thick sheet of some kind of glass, and it's just standing there staring out. Okay. I don't like it. I'm gonna go there. Okay. Cool. What kind of creature is it? <laughs> I'll make that one bit. Not a French one. <laughs> uh, nope. Mm -hmm. um, I would not advise getting close to the glass with that. I would rather... Oh, Angelo, does 25 break your AC? Sure does. ka oh. uh. A massive bolt flies through the air in the darkness and it beds itself in Angelo for 20 piercing uh. damage. Where did it come from? Oh it came from this direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, from the darkness, you said? Though? Yep. In which direction? Down south. This direction oh, here. Oh, jeez. From the Dark south. Direction. I'm going to stand between, uh, just like holding my shield up. Trying not to get too close to the statue, just holding it up in that direction. Very Actually, well. no, I'm going to stay by my allies with my shield up because I have a special thing that can help me protect them in case. You certainly um, can. I'm going to cast Cure Runes on Angelo. Oh, thank you. Right. May I suggest not standing in the path of where that weapon came from? I just gonna... I feel like Kashano already taught us this, y'all. <laughs> I gotta forget. Case another strikes. You hear the sound again. It batters against your shield, Kyrus. Oof. Okay. And clatters to the ground. Ah, that would explain the blood. Um, How? What's this thing look like? Like it's it's a. It, uh, it looks bolt. like a ballista bolt. I'm just making my way down here, but ah, I see it. Uh, you see. I? A ballista on cartwheels with a brass sculpted dragon head uh, put onto its front and uh, currently loading another bolt. No, 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 no. I'm going to turn it to aim it at the statue. All right. Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. Chunk. Hammers against the statue. The statue falls over. Uh, but remains intact. Okay. And then the mechanism slowly begins to reload it, pulling stop, the drawstring back. Stop, stop, stop. Gonna, how do I get it to stop? I'm just gonna oh, gosh. take a crowbar and just stick it in there to like jam it to like make it stop. What is it made out of? Can I uh, assist by firing a bow and arrow? Iron, brass, absolutely. <sighs> absolutely to who? Uh, you may you may assist. Fire a bow and arrow. Okay. Oh, okay. 
I feel like it's only fair for me to admit that I totally walked by that statue without thinking. <laughs> no one could see it, Angelo. It's not your fault. Does an right. 18 help Sakara to destroy does hit. it? <laughs> uh, give me some damage, too. Oh, yeah. Let's see. That's a thing. Oh, yeah. You, 13. You, all right. So you damage it. Sagara throws uh, the crowbar in. Okay. Uh, the crowbar definitely jams up the works on this thing, and the arrow does some damage to it. It kind of goes... <laughs> and the, the bow uh, wooden parts snap and kind of launch back. Sakura, make a dexterity save. Because <laughs> this is a rather violent reaction to what you've done. Oh, <laughs> What's... Uh, okay, well, let me... Let me... Oh, you we got... still have inspiration. <laughs> Yeah, you do, girl. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I got a twenty. Ooh, okay, man. you're good. You, this, Rose. there's like flinders <laughs> of woods flying off. It's whipping back and forth, and you're just like, whoa, whoa, huh, huh. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna be machine, again. <laughs> the machine seems to stop. Okay. Okay. Um... And. Uh, the creature has moved to the edge of its enclosure, is kind of like pressed up against the glass looking at all of you. No, no, no. no thank you. No, sir. Um, is this the room with the fire elemental? I think so. Before we continue. Question. What degree? Okay. No, you go first. Go ahead. I was just asking how what the quality of the, how the quality of the glass is. Does it look like it's about to break or it looks like it's it looks like Pretty, it's holding up uh, against whatever this creature is. You imagine it's likely enchanted. Okay. <gasps> Can I make Are you? Don't talk I'm not, to it. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. Uh, can I make note of its like physical features? Well, actually, there's a little pedestal in front of its cage that has a book on it that says research notes. Hmm. You can definitely make note of its physical features, but I'm just telling you that that book is there. I mm, mage hand. I don't have mage hand. Infernal touch, Prof Professor. Would you happen to have mage hand by chance? Uh, I I do. What do you need it for? I just point over to the book. Might be uh important notes. Oh. And uh, not okay. not that I'm scared. Oh, Can I? Um, <laughs> does it look like it's also on a? Does it look booby trapped where the pedestal is? It doesn't appear to be. Uh, it looks like a is? place that you keep research notes on subjects so that anybody examining it would kind of be up to speed. <laughs> okay, then um, I'll go ahead and lift the book and and mage hand it over to Kyrus to read. All right. uh, now I'm, I'm not going to. There's traps everywhere here. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. I'm not going to read it now. I'm just going to put it into my pack. Okay. For safekeeping. Uh, well, actually, I mean, if you could, I'm just going to show you guys what it is. Okay. Sure. I'll, I'll skim then. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a pretty short entry. Subject. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, subject was recovered <laughs> by an acquisition. Uh, acquisition squad roaming, uh, Ulter El Turo mm -hmm. after the Avernus incident. Subject rapidly flips between serene calmness and violent bursts, violent outbursts. Subject appears to be of goblinoid descent that checks out, but has inherited new abilities from its contact with the Hells. This could lead to further information about the effects of infernal corruption on other creatures. The creature may also be telepathic. Can't stop thinking about it. New security measures are in place for the subject after it convinced another researcher to open its cell. The victim uh, was completely drained of life, leaving only a husk of life behind. All personnel have been advised to strictly observe and not interact. Do not trust anything it says or anything you may think while within its sight. Well, we best move quickly. And I'll just uh, just shield my eyes and quickly walk on. Hell, queen. Nope. 
This is the experiment that uh, they warned us about not to open in it. I guess is the it? question is, did Kairos read that to all of us out loud or he read it? I, I imagine I, I just like whispered it over to Pro Professor Lilith. And then by the time I get out of its line of sight, I'll just like relay that same thing to everybody, you know, summarize. Careful, keep mm. your wits about you, literally. I hate it. Okay. <laughs> um, Sakura? I, I'm at a distance. Oh, shit. Come on. Sakura, you hear a I voice have, in your I head. May have <laughs> I knew your parents. Ignoring it. I'm ignoring it. I'm just looking at this table. I'm just looking at this table. They were not changed like me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Would you like to meet them? Free me! That is the worst thing that you could ever say to me because I never want to see them again. <laughs> oh, but they want to see you! They can try. They can try. Nothing at this desk. So, do we want to deal with this? Touched. <laughs> As you try to ignore this creature that is just like attempting so hard to get you guys' attention at the edge of this thing, you notice at the end of the room there are a series of boxes and crates, and there's straw all over the floor. Mm. Like somebody has just rifled through these. Mm. Let's not be near that if there's a damaged fire elemental behind this door. Uh, is that a singe mark? You might see uh, Lilith kind of clutching her head a little bit. <laughs> uh, Professor, you are right. Yeah, just a little headache. Maybe... Mm. She's hell touched, like you, like me. I completely ignore it. If this perhaps may be the uh, the place the fire elemental could be, uh, I'm willing to step forward. I could handle the heat. I'm, I'm gonna grab Lilith's uh, hand and just kind of walk her further away from over there. Okay. Uh, Lyra, mm -hmm. you feel a fey presence. Where is it coming from? It's in this room. It's, it's somewhere in the boxes. I'm going to investigate the boxes. Lyra had asked about this marking on the floor as well. Is is that right, Lyra? Yeah. Uh, yes, that is that is in fact the singe mark. It's like there. It feels like there used to be a person there, but they were burnt away. Yeah, this definitely is a fire elemental. But uh, where's this fey presence? Did they leave something. Is there someone here? I'd go to check the one closest to me and then is there anything in that one? You check the one closest to you and that box actually says experiment 26895. Does it feel particularly strong in this one? No, not in this one. These appear to be empty. There's just their okay. stuffing laid all over the floor. That it's number is really familiar. I think we were warned about that number. Two six eight nine five. That was the one that we weren't allowed to release. On any circumstances. Awesome. Looks like someone released it. And the You're middle close. one. This last one. It appears to be these sealed crates. Oh no. Um I'm gonna cautiously make my way over. Be careful, Lyra. 
For sure. There's something in these crates. It's definitely Faye. Um, Hello? How are the crates? Hello? Hello? Meow. Who, who are you? I'm out. I don't deserve to be in here. I sure hope not, but you didn't answer my question. I'm a powerful dragon. Dragon? What's That's, your name? You better let me out or else. Oh, boy. Um, I think this is a fey dragon. So... I think I'm gonna open it, but everyone be prepared, okay? Wait, why though? If I'm correct, this might be a... I, I don't think so, they're gonna do this heavy harm. If you crack open the crate, inside there's a small bird cage, and inside that bird cage there is a little fairy dragon. Oh, careful, Laya. What if you do? I'll take out everybody. <laughs> they are, they are witty tricksters. Wait, what? Lie, Will? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> what? I. This I'm... is in fact Glitterwing. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Who well, you knew how... back from your days in the Grove? <laughs> Oh my goodness. How did, how did you... Did they, how did they take you? Are you okay? Some goons snapped me up. They put me in this cage and they're trying to do experiments on me. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad it's you. Lyra, you know this creature? Ah, um... It's a funny story, actually. So, um... Uh, yeah, when I would, you know, go on my walks after dealing with uh, some of my... So there's a better word for this. Uh, less than friendly clan members, I would go into caves. And one of the caves had um, this little guy. And, but yeah, he was kind of one of my friends. Yeah. Oh, that's a relief. I thought I had just given a fae your name. <laughs> oh, I am so happy to have a familiar face. <laughs> I wish we could have met under better circumstances, but are you, are you okay? Well, I will be if you let me out of this cage. Oh, um... Wait, Lyra. Don't know. This could be a trick. He's never tricked me before. But it might not be him. Can I... Like, investigate it or examine it to see if this is like some. <laughs> to see if it's like some kind of trickery. Yeah. Absolutely, you may. Okay. I'm like, hold it effectively. Um, it's a 20. It appears to be a real Fey Dragon. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, perhaps. It... Perhaps a test of knowledge would be. Uh, pertinent. Lyra? Okay. Perhaps you know some things that only uh, Glitterwing would know. Okay, Glitterwing. What was my first wild shape when I got oh. in trouble with Dad? Okay, I don't know the answer, but he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, We'll, we'll say it's a cat. <laughs> okay. He turned into a cat. It was really funny. You were adorable. You were my sized. <laughs> um, well, I mean, ugh, that's right. And okay. not many people would suspect that you know, what else man would have cats. So, yeah. Unless it can read your mind. Nah. Or like we would like play tricks on like the other clan members, but they're always harmless. Kind of like some really. 
Maybe we should you. just keep it in the cage for now. I'm trusting you, Lyra, but... Yes, I, like Angelo, I will err on the side of caution. Splice have been messing with the arcane ways that we can't even understand. Okay, you can keep me in the cage if you need to. I get it. There's a lot of crazy stuff in here. Um, are you here? All right? Hmm? You won't hold it against me if you keep me in the cage. Oh, I understand. There's crazy things in here. There's something in the other room that keeps whispering to me. Oh boy, we have to get you out of here. Um, how big is the cage again? Uh, it's like you can hold it in your hand. It's like a okay. like a canary cage. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I can't just leave you here. So if you're coming with us. Okay, take me with. There's something. There's something really bad behind those doors. Yeah, I think we think it's a fire elemental. Sounds right. I <laughs> heard somebody screaming. We're screaming and burning, and then it stopped. Lyra, can Glitterwing fight if needed? Glitterwing, do you feel like you feel like helping us out? I'm a little tired, but I could do my best. Your best will be good oh. enough. Uh, I, I, I would like to give Glitterwing a cr an Angelo. <laughs> From a my bag? The sandwich? Nope. Yeah? <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Oh, this is really good. Ow, ow. Just in case we need your help. Oh, thank you. I have a you... couple spells, but they're mostly defensive. Ow, ow. You can okay. see Kairos is visibly not okay with this. <laughs> God, this is... um, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Litter wing. Tell us anything you may have overheard about being here. Sure, Just Littlewing now. I, I heard a bunch of rattling around, cracking open of boxes. I mean, uh, they, were, they were throwing a lot of things around. Somebody said they were looking for the vials. Um, and then everything went crazy. Looking for the vials? And smashing, people screaming. <sighs> Vials. I'll leave that black liquid. Yeah, the little ones. Um, well, what are we can't spells if he's on the cave? Right? I could probably cast them out. Yeah. They're just little ones. Okay. Well, I'll be you... okay. Maybe safer in here anyways. <laughs> Well, Glittering, please be careful. You're important to me, but these people are also important to me. So... I'll do my best to help. Okay. I'm so glad somebody came along. We... Hopefully we can get you out. This is just not, not sitting well with me. But, mm, fire elemental, yes. Um, Before that, though... <laughs> Can I investigate this crate over here that has this XX? Certainly. You crack it open. And the crate responds by doing this. Ah. So I need you to make an intelligence saving throw. Jokes on you. I'm a rogue. Twenty-one. <laughs> All right. Just uh, shove it you back down like silly buddy. Against the intelligence saving throw, as this, uh, you are psychically attacked by the goo inside of this barrel. Oh no! Uh, only uh, taking five damage. <laughs> shove it back down, just like the silly buddy. Put the lid back on. It's like, uh, can I cast frostbite and goo? Absolutely. Um, hopefully they'll slow it down. I wanted to make sure that they weren't explosives because I didn't want an explosive going off around this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it doesn't save, so you kind of like freeze the top half and then Sakura closes it shut and be like, nope, not, no, that's not a good barrel. <laughs> nope, nope. 
Yeah. Okay, so yes, back to the fire element. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we can strategize. I do have some ice and water spells. Hmm. Mm. Kairos, you said that you're fire resistant, right? I am. Okay. I also have this trusty shield. So. Okay. Yeah. It's D and D. It's D and D. It's D and D. It's D and D. We all agreed to play some D and D. That means role playing, fighting, and slaying, solving puzzles. Maybe it's just me. Oh, how convenient! <laughs> um. All right. Did we already oh, have you, Cyril? <laughs> Did you already expect the serrated shadow man over here? Uh, yeah, that's uh, it looks like a body was there but burnt away. Char marks, hmm. yeah. All right, I'm gonna slowly, hey. hmm? Angelo, don't be behind Kairos. <laughs> yep, just like slowly, just like peek through the door, just crack it open. The heat of the crackling flames is immediate as you can see a fire elemental next to a bookshelf kind of feeding books slowly into its form trying to stoke its flames yep. okay. I confirm over to my allies on fire elemental okay I have an idea but it might be a little bit weird but we could possibly do it ideas are good um so we have this barrel so somehow we can open the door and throw the barrel in and pop it with like a arrow or a spell. Hmm. Might douse the flames for a little bit. Give us an advantage. That does sound like the, a good idea. Here, I'll help. And I'm gonna go pull the uh, barrel, lower it on its side, ready for pushing. Angelo, All would right. you mind? Some assistance? Um, Professor Lilith, do you think yeah, you can sure. shoot it with the bow? The barrel. I sure can. I'm uh, gonna... Just... Which, which barrel? Uh, this water barrel. We're gonna kick it in. And hopefully it'll be close to the water fire elemental. Not water elemental. <laughs> Hold on. Are we doing a thing where we throw the, th the the barrel full of water and I try to like, you know, go bling and just water everywhere like a shower? Yep, that's exactly. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that reminds me of the giant's time. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> you're going to roll it? Not yeah, with Angelo's, with Angelo's help, just lay it on its side and try to, you know, because rolling is easier right <laughs> well, absolutely it is so uh the number threshold won't be as high it's angelo will give you advantage please give me an athletics check to roll this barrel all right <laughs> does that mean kairos rolls twice or do you want me to roll one uh he rolls twice because you're helping him so he gets <laughs> advantage uh 16 all right a 16 is enough, and it rolls up in front of the fire elemental as it kind of turns. <sniffs> Lilith, your turn. <laughs> you want to hit the barrel? Ka boing! <laughs> I, yes. I pluck it. I pluck this, this thing. <laughs> All right, give me your shot against the barrel. Sorry. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I feel like I'm rolling all my good rolls too soon. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared how these numbers are so high right now. <laughs> oh, oh, we're just getting started. So 22. Right. When you really roll damage? So you hit or... the barrel. It bursts uh, okay. as water sprays all over this creature. And it takes a pile of cold damage for that. But I'm going to need a round of initiative again because it is still kicking. It is just badly wounded. Oh, and it ain't happy. <laughs> <laughs> sure could use a seal right now. <laughs> say that my advantage is because my initiative is because I have a literal cage dragon with me. <laughs> He's so happy. He's so happy to be freed. He's just like, oh, good. All right. 
and uh, Fire Elemental still did better. <laughs> uh, gets up and makes a mad dash for Kyrus. And attempts to whap Kyrus with fiery fists. 25? Yeah, that does hit. Or sorry, 23. Uh, all right, that is six fire damage, sir. Uh, scratch. Yeah, and you don't ignite because you, yeah. That's actually three because, yeah, my resistance. Yeah, absolutely. Sakura? Oh, I'm going to put out this flame and I will go and try to strike at it with my rapier. <laughs> Which Very I well. don't think is magical, so it could. Ooh, that's it is good. a magical rapier. Awesome. Um, let's see here, that's 17 plus 6, so 23. Uh, yes, that will hit. Give me some damage. Okay. Sneak attack because it's my friend. Okay, yeah, that's not the best of rolls for damage, but whatever. Time for math crab. Math crab. <laughs> <laughs> math crab? It's my thinking crab. It's 11 damage. <laughs> All right, eleven damage. Its flames are dying down, but it's still kicking. Okay, Angelo. Hey, I will give advantage to Angelo as I move around to it. Which would like, oh dear, finish it. <laughs> I love you. Uh, is there another barrel of water close by that worked so well last time? Uh, there doesn't appear to be. All the other barrels have those three X's on them that psychically attack Sakura. <laughs> Wait a couple minutes. <laughs> I mean, you could try them. <laughs> no, I'm not okay. that dumb. Okay, I'm not going to tell you guys how to do I'm your dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, DM says to do something. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna yell at it from here, viciously. <laughs> right, I'm gonna make fun uh, of it being a fire. Yeah. Well, you think you can burn? You think you're hot stuff? Well, you're not. You're just you're a... barely a torchlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's see how it does for wisdom. Uh, it got a 12, so it takes three wisdom damage, or three psychic damage, but it is <laughs> still kicking. Um, and then, um, no, that's it. I'm going to hold off. All right. Uh, next up. Iris, your response to this creature. Yeah, just, uh, once again, just a normal swipe with a sword. No need to expend too All many right. resources. Uh, Give me a swing. Blop. That is 21. Hey. That is a hit. Mm. Give me that sauce. And uh, for some reason, the little thing is not uh, working. I'll just do that. Curse you button. There yeah. we go. There we go. Uh, right. Four damage. So your blade passes through this creature, and it creates kind of this a negative space in the flames of its body as it kind of poofs and dispels. But instead of the fire just calmly going out, the energy of this fire elemental seems to be drawn into your shield. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And this kind of crackle of flame emanates over the top of it. Uh, Iris, that's so cool. I and the creature is defeated. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, oh, that's new. Oh. I don't think that that's supposed to happen. Can I just take a closer look? Is it is my shield not just on fire? Like uh, it hasn't no. just in it hasn't just ignited, has it? Oh, it hasn't just ignited. Like the your shield your shield normally has this kind of mirror sheen to it, but now it's like 
it's like there's cracks of flame underneath the mirrored surface. It's warm to the touch. It's not burning, but this it's like it's like some kind of energy from the fire elemental has gone into your shield. I don't trust this. I'm going to just lay a hand on the shield. All right. It feels warm to the touch and the smooth surface ripples as it occasionally does before settling back into the smooth surface. We'll have to Can you try and use it, Kyrus? I don't think I want to use anything from here. <laughs> I hate this book. <laughs> I don't think I would want to use anything produced by Splice. Uh, what was that? Speaking of... They look behind me. You hear a sound... Uh, echoing like like something's biting into flesh and tearing at it. More experiments, perhaps. Oh, Eyes up, everyone. The hall spans out in front of you. It's this. There's blood stains on the floor. There are still a few bodies here. There are two desks with various research notes spread across them, and a number of bookshelves filled with various research documents. Uh, to your left, as you go deeper into the room, you can see it opens up into a kind of uh, wide open room. Mm. And to the right, there are desks. Um, yes. Okay, Lyra, I'm going to need you to hold up right there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess only went a little bit too far. <laughs> uh, as, you, as you go up to this desk, uh, the desk begins to move and change shape. Another. Oh boy. And the desk bites you Ugh. with advantage because you're on top of it. Oh, I'm in the no. desk! Oh, that's a crit. <laughs> so that is going crits, to girl. be seven piercing damage and 12 acid damage as this mimic closes around you. <laughs> uh, Lyra, no. I'm holding on my inspiration for healing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're well, back now. into initiative, everybody. Oh, Everything's yeah, death. Yeah, we're crap. back into combat. <laughs> 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 Ain't no rest for the wicked. <laughs> Everything is dangerous. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything here is something. <laughs> 22. All right. Oh, whoops, I didn't select it. Hang on. There we go. All right. Uh, Mimic's only got a four. Everybody. <laughs> Lola? <laughs> This mimics eating your student. It hurts Great. really badly. I'm gonna try to fire that arrow right in its mouth so we can gag <laughs> Lyra. <laughs> All right. Lock Give me that shot. Forward, arrow fly. 17. All right. Is a hit. Uh, 17 is a hit. Okay. See the damage. It's a 10 piercing. All right. Uh, it takes 10 piercing damage and uh, kind of instantly backs off of Lyra and uh, kind of runs away. Oh, runs. Okay. Ooh, don't trust it. I don't like that. I don't like it. Does Lyra get an attack of opportunity if it's running away from her? Lyra does. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna knock it, I guess. Alright. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm... I've is not enough. Uh, oh, wait, and this mimic... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> 16. Oh, okay, that's way better. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, not 18. I can read. I swear. I promise I passed high school. That's cool. <laughs> middle school. Yeah, I, I believe you. <laughs> uh, it's five you, give it, 
you give it a bonk and uh, it kind of whimpers and it slips into the cracks of the floor. And we're back out. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry guys. Uh, please be more careful. Sorry. All right, everyone. Tyrus? Anything here could be anything. We must investigate before we touch anything. Oh, oops. We're back into our combat? What happened? No, we're not. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Kyrus? Mm -hmm. There are very extensive research. Even talking puts you in danger. I'm, I'm not desk. picking them up. I'm not. I'm not going to do <laughs> it. Singer, you had that. You have that mage hand. Investigate. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna heal myself real quick. I mean, you can mage I'm hand. I'm gonna ask if you needed help. Right I can do it for you, Lyra. You got me earlier. Oh, thanks. Yeah. We appreciate. It. Lilith, will you mage hand the research notes? So... Yeah, as long as I see it's not triggering anything once again. Not some kind of, like, Indiana Jones shenanigan. <laughs> Alright. Not a lot, but I hope it helps. It's... Experiment report loose chains. And, uh, if somebody could please read experiment report loose chains. <laughs> uh, I will, if you don't mind. Just gather, Absolutely. gather everybody around. Oh. Through research hand encounters, hands. <laughs> hands. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Uh, sh through researching encounters with members of the Night Parade, it has been hypothesized that through accessing the demi plane of nightmares, we may be able to utilize the dense ether in the deep ethereal. Our knowledge of how magic functions in the deep ethereal further leads us to hypothesize that such access could lead to substantial new discoveries and creations. Do we? Does anyone here know anything about the deep ethereal? I don't understand a word you're reading, bro. <laughs> Not my uh, area of expertise. I can only put that smiling man because he seemed nightmarish. Yeah, the nightmare realm. I don't know if it was a realm or not, but I'm yeah. trying to connect the dots like that. <laughs> Level man related, maybe. Level three apprentice Aver Kopiko has been selected to test our theories about traversing the deep ethereal. The ritual was seemingly successful. However, Aver was not responded any attempts to contact him magically. Mm. Aver is believed to have been lost in the deep ethereal. There has been no successful contact, and he has not attempted to return at the scheduled time and location. Aver Kopiko, now reclassified as Subject 43683, has returned. In a way, the subject appeared late at night after a disturbance in the researcher's sleeping quarters. Subject seems to have been mutated by contact with the other plane, causing a massive mandibular growth leading to a distorted smile. Subject seems lucid, but remembers nothing of his original mission. He continues to insist that he's shepherd or caretaker of some kind. Subject seems to only communicate in cryptic vagarities. Subject will be kept in isolation and observed for possible future use. Whoever this was, they traveled to this other plane and came back changed by it. Bubbles. Definitely yeah. bubbles. And we're gonna take a break right there. <laughs> mm. We're getting an origin story here. Holy crap! <laughs> and big SCP vibes too, <laughs> which is always awful. Ooh. All right, folks. Uh, sorry for that uh, little hiccup we had earlier, but you didn't miss anything important. You got all the good stuff. We'll be back in fifteen minutes. <laughs> You had a hiccup? So this thing is happening again. I'm happy to announce that all of April will be dedicated to the Bards! 
specifically the Bards for Bards charity. This event aims to raise funds for the Artist Relief Tree to help out performing artists who are affected by COVID-19 because they can't work because, uh, you know, pandemic and all that. So throughout the month, there are going to be a ton of live stream events on twitch.tv slash bards for bards and sometimes on mine, featuring various D&D content creators from all around the internet. And we'll be hosting events such as live group drawing, game shows, D&D one shots, digital panels, video games, and much, much more. On top of this, there are stretch goals for the money raised that if reached, the charity will be giving out goodies to you, the audience, such as giveaways, fancy special projects, and even a pleasant pat on the head. As for this little guy, make Ship has partnered with Bards for Bards for a special campaign, the Wizard Goblin Plush, where for each one purchase, a portion of the proceeds will go directly to the charity. In addition, if sales reach 10,000 goblins, Makeship has agreed to donate an additional $10,000 to the cause. And I know it would have been nice to have like a Bard Goblin to, for the Bards for... Listen, planning doesn't work. I, I just... I, I tried my best. And if you don't have any money to donate or buy a plush, don't worry, you can still participate by joining in the Bards for Bards art challenge. Simply draw a bard of any kind and share it with the hashtag Bards for Bards on your preferred social media platform. And if you'd like your bard to be featured in a big showcase, email your bard to bardsforbardsofficial at gmail.com with the information listed in the description of this video. But how does drawing bards help with the charity? Well, for every bard submitted to the email, I, the Prince of Bards, will personally donate $5 per bard submitted. So get out there, you inspiring, charisma-casting bardic beauties. The world needs you now more than ever. Sing your songs, paint your canvases, show the world what it means to inspire as a bard. feline wizard who plays a magical harp. Okay, but that's an elf. Hey kids, are you tired of those boring old standard miniatures? Where, where's that voice coming from? It's not important. You can't defeat epic foes with normal heroes. You need custom heroes. And you can get all the custom heroes you need any way you want them at Hero Forge. You hear that too, right? Yeah, what is that? Shut up, it's not important. What is important is that with the launch of Hero Forge 2.0 update, you have more customization options than ever, and now you can get them printed in full color. It's just like I designed it! Just log into HeroForge.com anytime, anyplace, even on your phone. You can make your heroes whatever you want them to be. Dozens of fantasy species, thousands of items to mix and match, let you create virtually any character you can imagine. An elephant man! Wow, look, frog folk! I made a giggle dog! They even have robots! A bald eagle riding a wolf carrying flamethrowers! So much freedom! You can have your minis printed in a wide variety of quality materials, or download the STL file and print them at home. Oh, and did we mention that you can create custom images for your heroes and digital tokens for online games? Wow, wow those, those Hero, Hero Forge, Forge minis, minis sound so cool. great! You bet they are. Get your Hero Forge miniatures today. After all, you're gonna need them for what comes next. Wait, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Get your Hero Forge minis today! Then the party tried the sailor, Elizabeth, the alchemist, they had her, ADHD, screenager, Elizabeth, why'd you go, Elizabeth? Now we know not to trust teenagers, limited impulse control, undeveloped frontal lobes, Easily distracted by stuff on their phones. Oh, I'm getting a text. Oh no. I'm a teenager. Fred the Ranger of the Wood did the best that he ever could to keep the forest safe and well. Nasty monsters he did quell when Fred was young. Alright, well, so far our students have survived this laboratory, but. There's still half an episode left. Before we get back into the action, let's meet our cast once again. Puck, take it away. Hello. 
I am a very lucky dungeon master, and I like to take this moment in the middle of the show to talk about all these cool people that I get to play Dungeons and Dragons with that all do stuff out on the internets and get them to tell you about the things that they do. And we're going to start with uh, my buddy Joe slash Kairos today. Tell us about Hello, yourself. I am Joe Cat. Uh, I go on, uh, I'm known as Joe Cat on YouTube. I do a variety of things. Best well known for my crap guide to D&D uh, videos, but also more animation as I've been branching out into that. Uh, I have plans for just your typical videos coming out soon and more animation stuff and maybe one that some people might be excited for. Um, and I also stream on Twitch. And right now I am uh, in part uh, helping out with a very special charity that you may have seen during the break called Bards for Bards that uh, is raising money to help performing artists in need that are out of work due to the pandemic. Uh, you can find Bards for Bards on Twitter, on YouTube, and on Twitch uh, to help uh, for a good cause. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely check out Bards for Bards. So good. Such a good cause. Uh, help them out. They need it. Uh, and next up, Lyra. Well, Tell me about yourself. Hey, everyone. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I lost a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, hey everyone. That voice earlier is just like killing me. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would. I'm like, oh god. Ugh. Okay, but yeah, I am Lyra, also known as Jade Valkyrie, when I'm not playing the show. Um, and I stream, cosplay, uh, play in other um, one shots. I have two one shots coming up. One on May first. It's a cyberpunk, um, D D and D fifty like skin, cyberpunk skin. <laughs> and then another one on uh, May 14th, TBD, um, with the Initiative Orator and Blackwater D&D. So check those out. Um, I'll be posting the promos on my Twitter soon. Um, I also will hopefully be streaming again soon. So check that out, too. All right. Thank you so much. Next up, class rep, Sakura Hanamura. That's me. So I do... Whoa. Oh no. Oh, we lost Jade. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm gonna come. Uh, so anyways, uh, I promise that I don't kill people. Um, she'll be resurrected <laughs> soon. Maybe yeah. I'm a necromancer. I, but I had no, nothing I'm to not. do with this. <laughs> I am an artist though, and I draw things, usually for D&D &D or my own characters. See? She's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> back, to uh, back to a minute and that just went out for like two seconds, sorry. <laughs> I have a comic and I also have a YouTube where I make videos. So if you like this spooky stuff, you can uh, check out my next episode because that's, that is also going to be pretty spooky. So, yeah. Oh. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> next up, uh, Dear Angelo. Hello, that's me. My name is Saber and I do the art thing in the Instagrams. So you can check me out there. I put it in the chat. And I also am occasionally on Dirty 20 Gaming. You can catch me there and some Fun Shot Fridays and some other fun little things that happen over there. Hope to see you in the Discord. All right. Thank you so much. Last but not least, our instructor, Miss Singer. Hello, sweeties. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Dipper Dog playing Lilith on Sunday and also on Wednesdays, hoping that these guys don't die. <laughs> um, I uh, have a YouTube channel that I'm focusing on right now, so if anyone's on, we can really hop back on Twitch. Wait a little longer in the meantime, just hop onto the YouTube channel. That's where I'm doing most of my uh, streamings. Um, main focus is Final Fantasy content and um, other just variety games whenever I just need something fresh. I just finished this one other game called Mad Father. If you're into the whole freaky laboratory shenanigan, it's it's a very interesting short story <laughs> with a twist. And um, what else? Oh, and this Friday, uh, Uzu has been kind enough to join me again for another a uh, <laughs> bar for board. <laughs> we try to help. <laughs> uh bars on broadway episode with uh aiden he's gonna join in and um hop on over on friday evenings to see uh what the trio of us will be uh 
putting our characters, our bards, in for uh, the next musical Broadway. Um, Uzu, you picked a. Um, I really remember like <laughs> these girls in skirts and some kind of powerful. I can't remember which musical play that was. <laughs> Heather's musical. There we go. We got Heather's musical, and then Aiden's. will hop on over to see what he picked. <laughs> I'm gonna keep trying. I got this crazy idea and <laughs> shared it with you earlier. I was like, what if each episode we keep adding more bard people, and then the end result was Schoolhouse Rock or something like that. <laughs> We'll see where that goes. Uh, right now, I'm just having fun reading with mean people and chatting with them while drawing. Anyways, I talked long enough. Uh, here's the link. Oh, yeah. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Everybody, check that out on Friday. Uh, look forward to seeing it. And thanks again to our sponsors at Hero Forge for helping us make these shows possible. Uh, head on over to Hero Forge to get your own custom miniatures. There's never been easier. Uh, tons of options. Anything you can imagine, you can probably get it built in Hero Forge. And now they got full color too. So please check them out. They support us. We support them. Uh, we love them for it. And thank you. All right. Now, when last we left our students, uh, everything is hurting. Uh, this, this place is just... There's bad stuff all over the place, and uh, through discovering what they can in Splice Labs, they were uh, kind of impromptu contracted by a man named Conrad Whitmore uh, and asked to help him escape. They found a couple research documents. The most recent seems to allude to the identity of Bubbles, also known as the Smiling Man. And... That is where we left everybody off, in this hall, having just read this document about an experiment known as Loose Chains. It's Bubbles. Hmm. The man from our dreams. Hmm. That's what I'm guessing. There's an entire eight-year jump in between when they first lost him and when he returned. Eight years in the deep ethereal. It may have even been longer for him. Who knows how long it is in the ethereal. Extraplanular travel is... Mind numbingly confusing. Mm. Telepathically, a voice reaches out to all of you. Hello. Hello. We all feel new. Goodbye. <laughs> we all feel what? New. You're new. Who are you? I deliberately do not respond and try to go about my business. Fuck, fuck this. Fuck all this. It just, I actually, it so just like, I actually just looked at Kairos because he shushed me before. So I'm like, <laughs> Kairos's eyes are screaming. No, dude, Saber, if you want to, if you want to throw <laughs> caution to the wind with Angelo, by all means. I well, he, he gave me the, I already you. said hello, so. <laughs> help us. How? Yes. What is your name? Who are you? Where are you from? Hmm. Maybe hard to believe, but I'm a bit fuzzy on my name. I'd forgotten it when they found me. I was hurt. They brought me here. They wanted me to teach them things. And I tried. But then they didn't like what I had to teach them. And they just left me here. Where are you? Through the door to the left. I'll uh, watch for the beast. If you'd like, I could feed it to the roper. 
Uh, I look to Sakura. Have I been hearing this entire conversation? Yep. Hmm. It just offered to feed a beast to the roper. Um, what's a roper? Would that be something so, that I know? Uh, a roper is a beast from the Underdark. They take the appearance of stalagmites and uh, they have long tendrils that can reach up to 50 feet and they wrap around creatures and bring them into them and devour them. Oh, So if you feed the beast to the roper, what are you going to feed the roper to? Nothing, but it will allow you access to my enclosure. Oh, enclosure sounds like it needs to stay enclosed. Thanks anyway. Well, very well. You do know it's a trap, don't you? You sound like a trap, yo. Perhaps I do. It's been so long, I can't say that I get to know the difference. But proceed as you will. Maybe you can still feed the thing to the roper, though. If you wish. But I rather like having it outside my enclosure. It makes sure nobody I don't want to get in gets in. What kind of beast is it? Hmm. Otiach. Oh, we know what that is. Yeah, what language is that? <laughs> Uh, do, uh, oh, geez, an Otia. Uh, that is gonna be like, <laughs> that is gonna be like an Arcana check. Oh, dear. That's not my strong suit. No. Can we all roll or no? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I got you can all Anybody know what as a... much as you want. Oh, Tiek might be? Anyone? Oh, no. <laughs> Nope, nobody knows. I got an 18. And then... <laughs> 18. Uh, it is a aberrant magical creature that has no eyes, a massive toothy mouth, and three tentacles. It is just a bizarre, monstrous creature. It's just a weird, wiggly eye with not eyes, no eye, mouth. Oh, we can handle um, worse. I mean, it's an aberrant kind of creature. Not really always good to deal with those, but I would rather deal with that than agree to some deal with whoever this voice is. No deal. If you'd like to visit me, I simply remove the doorman. Mm. It has been so long since I've gotten to talk to anyone. What do you look like? Tall, purple skin. An image is projected into all of your minds. It's a mind flare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Cool. no. Uh, no thank what? you. Saying under my Why breath, you... <sighs> Why are you all judging? <laughs> <laughs> We could talk about it later, Angelo, but this is a big... this with the lich, too. That's not very nice. This is very different, Angelo. This is not good. But I don't understand. Kairos was like, we can't kill the googly-eyed thing because it goes... Bleh, 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 bleh. But this guy's talking to us, and you're like, no, we can't save him. They eat brains didn't know what the googly eyed thing would eat. You were seeing how it reacted. It wasn't. I understand that you're being that you're frustrated by this and but you need I'm to trust me. kind of sad. You know, people think this way about orcs too. I think that a lot of us have gone through our own judgments. Whatever, I trust you, you're the leader, but still, I'm kind of sad. Well, hey. Tell you what, Angelo. 
Say yeah. we do meet this creature. Uh, perhaps if we do see it in person, we can have a chance at maybe getting a better impression of its true intent. No, I just simply don't trust this entire place and whatever resides here for the most so part. Anything that wants anything, it's probably going to go through drastic measures to get it. In our defense, those creatures above, uh, they didn't seem to want anything. They were wandering mindlessly. This thing has its own agenda. It seems to really only want a visit, I guess. And I kind of think that if he can destroy a monster that could potentially harm us just for the sake of destroying it, that we should take him up on it. One that less thing true. to fight. I don't trust something that's able to just do that, and yet it is still trapped here and left here. That doesn't make sense. For it to be able to just do that, but yet it's still there. It just sounds like it's trying to lure us closer to it. I don't trust that. If it's well, able it, to do this. Is it on the way, at least, to where we're going? Based yes. on, yeah, Puck, based on the directions we were given. Yeah. Based on the directions that you're given, you should proceed straight ahead. And that's n not the direction that it wants us to go, this voice? No, the direction it wants you to go is this way. The direction that you heard the uh, sounds of gnawing on flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, like the roper sounds like what Conrad described as the back of the dissection area where his friend got taken by tentacles. A point. And... A point in uh, uh, Angelo's favor. Conrad is not exactly our primary objective. Can you remind us of our primary objective? I assume just finding out what's going on with Splice. They were supposed to be out of commission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm. Also, you were supposed to find an experiment to report. Mm. Well, we got, we have one. We could go now. It's not the one that we need, though. That's true. Um, which one did we need? The one for the black two six eight nine five two six eight nine five. Um, I thought we did find that one. No, we found um. That was the label on the empty boxes. Oh. We did find two three eight two, much lower <laughs> number. Hi. <sighs> don't think we should stray from what we are here for. I understand. I just, I think I was more sad at the immediate judgment of someone, but you're right that this is a place that we shouldn't be trusting most anyone. So that's fair, I guess. I'm glad you understand. Carry on. Do, do, do. Don't well. touch anything. I understand that my kind are feared. Perhaps there is a good reason for this. It's not you, bro. It's everyone here. We're not trusting anyone. It's like, is everyone in this lab telepathic? <laughs> or is it just the ones that want something? <sighs> I'd I wouldn't uh, put it past them. There have been a lot of experiments going on. Who knows what other psychic abilities things have gotten that they shouldn't have. Can I peek around this corner? Can I do a perception uh, in this room you... to see if there's anything else that we should be aware of? Uh, sure, if you want to have a peek. What I need to do that perception? Uh, well, uh, you need to crack open the door. Oh, I don't want to get shot by something. Uh, Sakura, you're the rogue. -y. Come do the rogue thing. Yep, I'm coming. Into the room the that way. was 
I will wait for Professor Lilith to have her little check around first before I crack open the door and peek in. Right, I, move. I was asking if this was the room you wanted oh to look boy. into. No, but oh boy. <laughs> Alright, look, if you just see it. Okay. <laughs> which, which room did you want to look into? I thought it was muted too. Oh. No, what did you want to see? Sorry. Um, I was just wondering if there any like pages or knickknacks in the room uh, that we were just uh, that we were in that we need to pick up or something. Uh, do a perception check so of all these bookshelves. Right in here. <laughs> okay. In this bookshelf, you find 17. a book labeled Experiment 26895. Oh, no. Be careful when you go to touch it. Mage hand. <laughs> All right. You pull out Experiment Report 26895. And here it is. And I give it to Kyrus to read. Because <laughs> I know he likes to read. <laughs> I just like, just like, uh, just pick it up like with two fingers and like hold it like it's a, like it's something gross. <laughs> and uh, start to read. Thank you, Professor. Uh, 1507, 24. A specimen commissioned from. Zelos, Zelos Enterprises. Does anyone recognize that company name? Sounds familiar, but I don't know why. Uh, the Academy you has see had Lilith literally go down the floor and just hits the damn floor. Like, gosh, <laughs> like, why? Well, you know, from the I Academy's that, history, that uh, Zelos Enterprises is morally gray at best. It is operated by a man known as Lord Zelos, and uh, the the academy and his organization have come into conflict multiple times at this point. Mm. What is it they are? What do they produce? Are they a producer? What is it? Uh, he gets his hands into a lot of different things. He had a expansive shipping industry. He was making warforged constructs for protection for a while. Uh, he was. Mm. He's in various armament building and scattering. Uh, mm. Since most recently, he's shut down his operations in Waterdeep, and uh, he is in Park Unknown. Hmm. Still kicking around, did I he see. Did also commit genocide on a village for sunflower pods? He did. <laughs> did I get remember that wrong? Yeah, okay, there you go. Can I, uh, can I headcanon that Lilith said that out loud? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a chemical substance created to be some kind of performance enhancer. Mr. Stone was reluctant to divulge many details about the substance. However, he was able to tell us it came from the island of Motofufu. It was potentially developed by some ne necromatic lord that lived there. The client has ordered that we deconstruct the ingredients in the compound and determine the possibility of stabilizing the substance for mass production. Hmm. About a month, uh, a few, about a week later, after three, oh, three months of research, we have made little progress. Initial uh, tests reveal that while subjects dosed with the mixture increase in strength up to 1,000 fold, the one with one of the testing wraps destroying an enclosure, the transformation is too unstable. The body can't keep up with the rapidly developing muscle tissue. The skin tears open and organs begin to fail. There's something strange about the ingredients as well. I have isolated a number of more conventionally alchemical compounds. There are still several substances involved that remain a mystery. Mm, dabbling with ingredients unknown, are we? After two years of research, we have made some progress with the substance through experimentation on creatures with natural regenerative abilities. Goblinoids? We have found that we can make the benefits of the mixtures last up to th 
three times as long depending on the strength of the subject's regenerative abilities. However, the survival rate of test subjects remains at 0%. We have found a method of magically replicating the unknown compounds in the mixture, allowing us to fill in the gaps and produce the product in large quantities. One year later, management has decided that the mixture will best utilize in-house. The clients will be advised that the product was a failure and the financial support will be refunded. The mixture will continue full production and testing with full-scale distribution expected to be achieved in three months' time. It is not ready. It's not ready. What are they doing? This is leaving a really bad feeling. Uh, how did they start production? Because how did they that random person have it in water deep? So casually. Oof. Seems they also have Was no it the black hands that had it first. Couple people you've encountered have had it. <laughs> this type of of alchemy uh, seems to have no already. regard for the subject's health and security. Just about every entry seems to be some kind of thing going wrong, and yet they continue the testing. This is in the public right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. You know, if we solve this problem, we better move up like four different years, at least. Well, hopefully it will at least give us a uh, few days away from homework. Uh, yeah, I'm talking like at least a week. <laughs> I'm sticking with four years. Four years, no homework. Deal. Well, we know one thing for sure. Puck? That, uh, Go ahead. No, go. you go first. Uh, I was just going to ask, um, besides the years that we're getting from this research, how many years exactly, like, to present day has this been going on? Uh, the last entry like is about years, two years, years away from present day. And is about a month and a half away from when the warlocks said that they destroyed Sports Labs. And this is the same experiment that the boxes were empty on. Correct? Yeah. These are older mm -hmm. entries. So clearly someone has looted the boxes of these vials and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's probably connected to Xanathar. Or at least somebody in Waterdeep. Well, Xanathar wanted this particular item, right? Perhaps to cover his tracks. He knows what else is going on inside of his own town. Is there a similar looking file or folder or book or whatever this is because we said we were going to oh, make a copy so there's we wanted to tons look legit. of experiment reports in here there's all kinds um, yeah we can grab the folders uh, well Singer is going to do it with the mage hand yes <laughs> Mm -hmm. so with, props, <laughs> with Prop Stringer's assistance, you grab a similar folder. Okay. So we have our side mission completed. Uh, now is it just time to get out of here? Sakura's doing the, the roguey thingy. Yeah. Because we still need to get to that room with the man. Because yeah. the only way out is the button in there. Yeah. So. Yes, we okay. forward then. Also, Oof. we definitely did not kill that mimic, so I guess don't touch anything more than usual. 
Way ahead of you. <laughs> Crack open the door and look in. Ka-chunk! Carefully. Oh. Another one? <laughs> and then there's a sliding sound and a clatter of metal on stone. Yeah. yeah. Is there a projectile? Um, or... It is rolled out onto the floor. As you peek inside, you can see it kind of rolling across the stones. There's another one of these ballistas in this room. And mm-hmm. it reloads and attempts to fire again. <laughs> but you notice that, again, the bolt just kind of slides out and tumbles to the ground. It seems oh. somebody cut the, the wire. <laughs> oh, okay. That's smart. It... Give me a moment to kind of just scout ahead to look. Ah. Hello, buddy. I say not in character. That's a lot. Sneak back out. So those weird chickens are here again. (laughs) Is there another door in there? Yeah. There is. Uh, Actually, there's more of these copper tubes in here. Hey, uh, are you? Did you make it? Oh. You alive? Yep. Oh, good. Okay, you're almost there. We're almost. We're on the home stretch. Real proud of you guys. Um, did all of the anomalous amount of you make it? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. All right. Uh, yeah, so just a straight shot through this door uh you should be uh good to go uh there's a there's a flight of stairs you take it down and i'm in there you guys so, you guys killed all the dangerous stuff if it's such a straight shot then why aren't you just coming up cuz there's stuff in there what stuff is in there okay there were some like weird chickens yeah. that had like scales and stuff yeah uh, and there's a couple more of them blob things with the eyes and teeth. Uh, they're fine. Come up to meet us. Let's go. Oh, no, no, no. You come get me. And if you survive the trip, I know we'll survive the trip back. We've met you more than halfway. That's good. Let me familiarize you with what I call leverage. Nobody gets out if I don't get out. Mm. Makes sense? We clear? Yeah, but you said it's fine to come this way, so you should be fine to come meet us. Yeah, it's fine for you guys who survived this far and didn't get killed by monsters. So, you know, go on. Yeah, all right. I believe in you. Hey, baby. You should see some of these research notes. Splice Labs specializes in monsters with unique abilities. We sometimes ask ourselves, why petrification? Because a force of petrifying monsters utilized as weapons would leave behind materials and mortar for building fortresses. Isn't that sick? (laughs) You you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just kind of like just it takes a loose scarf, just kind of ball it up and just kind of shove it into the pipe, just like, okay. <laughs> we know what we know that we have to do. I, I don't want to hear his voice anymore. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Told you he sound like a jackass. <laughs> yeah, can we, can we please just go get him? I probably don't yeah. want to be in there longer than we have to. I will peek open the door. It appears to be clear. As far as you can. It see. appears to be what? It appears to be clear. Okay. Just sneak in. Hmm. I'm gonna perception check around because he mentioned the eyeballs with the wiggles. 
Mouse. Oh, chicken. <laughs> it's always gonna call. Okay. So we're going downstairs. Yeah. The mimic went through the floor. Sakura. So. Because you saw the number on Barmble Snark. You see the same kind of experiment number on this piece of paper on this note. Ah. Uh. So. That was right. That troll that he mentioned was the one that we dealt with. Um. I've kind of already seen Prof Stinger like pick up things with the mage hand, so I'm just gonna. I swear to God, if this fucks me up now, I'm just gonna pick up the notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Here are the notes. Okay. Troll dietary mutation experiment. Three, eight, one. Captured in the nearby woods, subject 2381 was unsuccessful in limb mutation trails. Uh, he has been placed in the dietary mutation program in hopes that he can be of further use. Chest 22, 1509, DR. With the success of previous experiments with the other trolls assimilating mimic tissues through diet, we have opted to feed subject 2381 a steady diet of basilisk eyes. Our hope is that the subject will assimilate the creature's petrification abilities. Kaithron 2nd, 1509, DR. Dietary experimentation continues to be successful. Subject 2381 has developed the ability to petrify other creatures by looking at them. This was discovered with the loss of a lab assistant. Evidently, the subject has not acquired the basculus ability to eat and digest stone, out of frustration, the subject smashed the lab assistant. Recommend non-living meals going forward. Does so that mean that that mimic could possibly be a troll? Or is the troll... What? No, this is about the troll that we all killed. Yeah, I just... I mentioned experiments with trolls eating mimics. So either that's escaped food or a mimic troll. Mm. I feel like if it was a mimic troll, it wouldn't have ran away like that. You have a point. Might be something else. Can I check on my uh, little fey friend? See how it's doing. Uh, he's he's still eating the Angelo. <laughs> it's a really big sandwich. It's a big meal. <laughs> Yes, like sir. A meal for a tiny guy. It's a small sandwich, but it eats like a meal. <laughs> oh God, someone's doing okay down here. <laughs> Just get where would we go again? I uh, said straightforward. So, what's this on the floor? Uh, it appears to be the gate for this doorway. <laughs> Oh, snap. I'm just going to peek. Oh, hey. Another little pal. Oh, that's a big pal. Big chicken. Oh, okay. Um, I'm okay with just this going forward. Just morphs and changes in size and shape constantly. Mm. Um, another dead person? We'll check the dead person. This one is covered in bites all over. Uh, you think that perhaps some of these gibbering, gibbering mouthers have been gnawing on it. Mm. Gotcha. Chickens eat meat. Mm. <sighs> this the body have anything on it uh it has an acid burned sword an acid burned dagger and uh six gold pieces on this one 
I will be taking the gold. Do. Oh, here are the stairs. Oh. Did the other dead bodies also carried anything too, or no? Uh, I think you guys have been checking most of them. But I knew Sakura checked the one in the entrance. I think the other two. They have, they have was... similar <laughs> items on them, all of them. Uh, got a peek in this room? Empty. Uh, except for this thing, which could be a mimic, so I'm not going close. Yeah, there's a there's a bench kind of attached to the wall mm -hmm. by chains. Mm -hmm. Suppose Nothing we... on the bench. Mm -hmm. Go downstairs. Uh, you, Professor Bill's fairy fire, too. Wait, what? Fairy fire? Yeah, perhaps that could tell us where the mimic is when we go downstairs. Um... Before I reach you guys, I'm curious, Puck, do I hear anything in this area that I'm in right now? Is Listening thing to the grate? With the, the hole? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to know. Uh, I'm curious if, you, if I hear anything if down you there. If you go listen into the I'm grate, <laughs> you hear old movement like something sloshing through water. Hey, y'all seen Prof Lilith? Hugging the water. Hello. Oh, <laughs> she is. Phew. Okay. You would be Apparently. so mad at us if one of us went missing. Well, you're, you're rushing ahead. And apparently, there's water down below. Fair warning. Ooh, that would have been helpful for the fire elemental. Would have been. Oh, I think. Now, who knows what we're going to find in the water? Perhaps a water elemental. Hmm. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, mm. Gosh, anyone here know lightning? Yeah. Ooh. Got some fire spells. My sword does thunder damage. Uh, thunder is sound, Angela. Oh. They're not the same? No. Oh. So, you, you see versus, lightning. You, yeah, you hear shock. thunder. Oh, see, when a storm happens, I just assumed everything's the same. <laughs> well, they do work in tandem. Okay. Well. Shall we then? If anyone seems to be drowning, just let me know. I've got maybe one more bottle of water breathing. I don't know. I need to check my bag. <laughs> Anyways. Mm. Hi ho. Water breathing <laughs> sounds fun. I would, so, I would like to go. A spiraling <laughs> staircase sprawls out leading downward. Sneak, sneak. So. Angela, where'd you, where'd you go? <laughs> I, I was just peeking around the corner. I, I know, I'm tipping too to search this place. <laughs> As you all descend the stairs, uh, it eventually empties out into a kind of foyer room. There's a massive doorway in front of you uh, into a brightly lit room. And as you make your way into this bright, brightly lit room, uh, it's enormous with these high ceilings. And there are pillars kind of scattered throughout. Uh, you hear high above you on a platform, almost like a balcony, uh, screaming through some bars. Oh, you made it! You know, I'm so glad. I'm. <laughs> it's... I'm so glad you guys made it down here. Um, and then a wall comes down at the entrance to where you came in. See, I fibbed. I fibbed a bit. Uh, but of course you did. You, you guys are doing me a huge favor. Uh, I'm going to kill you. Okay. And then I'm going to get out with my stuff. Uh, so that's cool. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, you know what? Did you know they had ogres in here? You wouldn't believe what happens to the ogres when I give them the black stuff. And the stone grades as two wall panels open up. You and know what? Ogres... I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> what I'm going to fucking do. Uh, yeah, if I... you survive. <laughs> 
watch two it. ogres do we see him or only hear him still in pain oh you can see him through the bars up top how's he look i recognize him he, he looks like a generic dude <laughs> Sorry. he just looks oh. like a guy mm -hmm. Kyrus and Lilith didn't really come in here. Are they still oh, we, on the No, outside? we did. I, I just keep oh, forgetting sorry. to move my token. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. The ogres cry out in pain as their bodies just bulge and grow and their skin splits and they hammer on the ground before aggressively charging into everybody. No, and we terrible. will do this boss fight next week. Oh! <laughs> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Man. Well always well. gotta have a patches style character. <laughs> it looks like uh the black goo is going to be the undoing. But um, you know, let this be a lesson that if there's ever an asshole trying to lure you down to the depths of a dungeon, just say no, kids. Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we sign us up. <laughs> thank you all for joining us today uh and a little bit early today but you know we got to get ready for that boss fight <laughs> so thank you all for watching uh thank you everybody who you know like share and subscribe and everything like that you guys make the show possible uh we can't do it without your guys and more so over i can't do it without this incredible cast of people that come by and play D, &D with me and uh read my poorly spell checked things <laughs> <laughs> go through my research notes and uh just play this game with me thank you all so much uh for doing this and participating in this uh i have been having a blast doing this and i can't uh wait to see how this group wraps up the adventure and we will see that not next week because we have a sunder back but we will see that on the 5th of may so you're going to want to come back then and get the epic conclusion on how it breaks down but uh so you want to tune in then thank you be Oops. sure to tune into asunder as well you know even if you missed the previous episodes yeah. each one's sort of like a one shot so you can jump right in it's very episodic enjoy a new system <laughs> absolutely hop in and check out asunder uh brand new we, we got uh, adam lawson in on that one and uh it's it's a really fun interesting no magic world with crazy like tree mechs and stuff it's really awesome uh cool bug people mutations you can be a guy that has like teeth on his knees it's really weird it's, <laughs> it's a ton of fun uh so check that out uh next wednesday as well and uh I mean, that's that's it for today, everybody. So again, thank you all so much. Thank you again to our sponsors. Thank you to our producer. Thank you to my players and my instructor. And until next time, everyone, class dismissed. It's D&D. &D. It's D&D. &D. It's D&D. It's D&D. &D. It's D &D. It's D &D. We all agreed to play some D&D. &D. That means we're playing, fighting and slaying, solving puzzles. Maybe it's just me. But you guys won't. No, we won't. You guys just don't. No, we don't. Follow a single plot line through and through. I'm not complaining, but instead of gaming, you find the weirdest other things to do. There was adventure, but you guys wouldn't venture. Instead, you said the mountains looked real nice. Middle of winter, you went to the hinter, lands of permafrost and frozen ice. You hid from every danger, you wizard, rogue, and ranger.